We're going to actually, guys, we're going to move on to our season preview. And our season preview, we're going to say who's going to be the division winners, who's going to win the Calder Trophy, who's going to win the Hart. And we're going to start with the trophies. So, guys, first, first things first, who do you have winning the Calder Trophy for Rookie of the Year? I'm going to say Cole Caulfield is going to win the Calder. I, I, I just think that I, I, I could see him scoring somewhere between 25 and 30 goals and maybe even more than 30 if things run right for them. He'll try to keep Montreal in playoff contention. I think ultimately Montreal is going to miss it because Shea Weber being out for the year is going to hurt their b- defense big time. Carey Price being out indefinitely is going to hurt them even more. But Cole Caulfield is – going to probably play with Nick Suzuki and I think they're going to make some magic together. So I think Cole Caulfield's going to win it. Anthony. A couple of weeks ago, we had a bar talk and um, I, I, I was high in Quentin Byfield for this, but um, you know, reflection is the season getting closer. Um, and especially he suffered an injury uh, in camp, but um, I'm going to go Cole Caulfield too. Um, I mean, the guy, uh, he's not big in stature, but he's got a lethal shot, a really quick release. He's got a nose for a net, uh, and his hands are are ridiculous. And, yeah, I agree with Phil. Uh, he's had some good chemistry with Suzuki, and I think he's going to score a bunch of goals, possibly possibly 30. Um, and I'm not, he, I don't think he's going to run away with it with, as Kaprizov did last season, but um, I think he'll win it. And just to, as a sidebar, I, I Trevor Zegers will be close behind him in second. I'm actually going to go completely different and I'm going to go with an off the rails pick, like out of completely off the radar. I'm going to okay. go more at Snyder. Uh, I think he might get the number one job for the power play in Detroit and he might be putting up some numbers because somebody has to, that's just the way to do it. Like uh, Thomas Shabbat a few years ago had a, had a great season with the Ottawa senators, but um, I don't even think he was a finalist, but, uh, you know, it's yeah. I I have to give a different name besides Cole Caulfield, who has a really good chance at it. Um, before we go to the other all the the positions, uh, Anthony, we'll start with you. Who's gonna win the rocket? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's Austin Matthews. Uh, you know, he had a hell of a year. I mean, he a guy almost scored 50 goals in a 56 game season. Um, he, you know, he had that wrist injury. Uh, I think he'll be ready for the start of the season here tonight. Um, but I think as long as he stays healthy, um, I think it's his to lose. I mean, you can't count out Pasternak and of course, you know, Ovi who's chasing Gretzky. Um, but I, I, I think Austin Matthews is going to take it home. Ovi chasing Gretzky. Can he score at 90? Anyway. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got to go with Matthews as well. It, it's – I don't know if there's a better goal scorer in the league right now. Alexander Ovechkin's obviously arguably the greatest goal scorer ever. But Alexander Ovechkin right now at 36 years old is not Alexander Ovechkin at 26. So – this is this is a completely different story now. Matthews has definitely surpassed him. I want to say that it's going to be Matthews, and I, I don't know who battles him for it. Probably Pasternak would probably come close. Um, maybe someone out of nowhere really kind of joins the race. Maybe Re- Miko Rantanen steps his game up goal scoring wise this year. Or someone, or maybe Nathan McKinnon breaks 40, you know, and starts getting close. So, you know, uh, you know, I didn't want to go with a clean sweep for the Calder Trophy, but we're going to do it right now. Uh, Austin Matthews, if he's healthy, he's leading the league in goals. The only argument is, does he get 60? Filk? I had to put that up there just because I got uh, so, you. Again, it's not my best song. No, but um, I if if we're going, we should have saved that for bar talk, Mark. Jeez, you took. Oh, uh, you know my, what? We could have done. You know what? We could still do that. already with with the Matthews thing. So now now we're gonna take away two topics. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I'm going to say beer. It's more than possible that he hits 60, but I don't see it. Anthony? Shot. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to buy everybody around on this one. So there you go. We'll go. We'll, I'll type it in while we're doing the other ones. We'll go back to it. And the, and the reason right, why boy. I say this, is this, this year he's playing against every single team, not just the North Division. So I think it's going to be he's, – it's, he's not going to have an easier time as he did last season. I, I, you know what, though? In the, yeah. the North Division, yeah, they didn't play any defense, but he's going to play some weaker teams that weren't in his division. you got to remember, he's going to play more of Buffalo. That's And Buffalo's weak. He's going to play <laughs> yeah. Montreal. Montreal, it, to me, is a weaker team than they were last year. He's going to play the other weaker teams. He's going to play Detroit, which I, it, they're in their division as well. So that's another weak team that he yeah. can feast on. He's going to he's going to see other weak teams. So, yeah, that's I got to agree with that. And they might have to run and gun this year. I I particularly don't love their defense and I don't love their goaltending. So we'll see about that. Not that again, not that I wish ill on anybody. So, guys, who's going to win the Vesna Trophy? And uh, I'm going to save my my analysis on this one for last because I was looking at it today and going, really? But, uh, Phil, you first. I know this is such an easy pick because he's considered the best, but if, I've got to go with Andre Vasilevsky because this year Tampa Bay does not have the stack team that they've had the past two years or the past three years, I should say, when they – won 62 games, tied the NHL record, and then won the back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. They lost their entire third line. They've lost some depth players. Uh, they just lost one of their top prospects in waivers. Uh, this team is affected. So Andre Vasilevsky has led the NHL in wins the last four years in a row. I can't remember the last goaltender that did that. So um, I, I got to say Vasilevsky because he's going he's gonna to get a lot of wins. He probably still might lead the league in wins again on, like I said, a lesser team. And his numbers are going to be right near the top, and he's not going to have some great defensive system in front of him. So I'm going to go Vasilevsky. Anthony? I mean, I, I again, I hate to agree, but, yeah, I mean, it's 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 Vasilevsky. Um, he's the best goalie in the world. Uh, you know, I, I mean, Connor Hellbuck could give him some, could give him some competition for it. Robin Leonard. Um, I, I don't know. Um, but I, I, I think it's going to be Vasilevsky. He's just, he, he's his size and quickness, um, is just, you know, top notch and Tampa Bay. While I think you're losing that whole third line will hurt them. And it's one game, so you don't read into it, but they didn't look very good last night, but, um, I, yeah. I still think they're going to be a really good team. Um, and I think Vasilevsky is going to be at the head of the table. So this was my analysis in this today. Do you guys know who the last back-to-back Vezina -back, uh, Trophy winner was? Back-to-back Vezina -back Trophy. Uh, Dominic Hoshik. Hoshik. Martin Brodeur, 2007 oh, and 2008. 2007 and 8, yes. Okay. There's cool. only one repeat winner active in the league right now. Know who that one is? One repeat active winner? Okay, stop flurry. Luongo retired. Harry Price. Um, no. No, Harry Price has only won one. Yeah. Um and he, in my opinion, he stole one from Henry Gonquist, not Carrie Price. This guy. Quick. No. No, Quick hasn't hasn't never won it, I don't think. Oh. Sergey Burbrowski. Oh and God. wait, 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 hold on one second. Back to won. back winner? No, no, not back to back winner. Repeat winner. Yeah, that's a back to back right. winner. Okay, he won. That he had two. That's what I'm trying to say with that. You can't. You, you can't say repeat winner. Repeat winner means that they won it in two consecutive years. If you're going to say multiple time winner, you got to say multiple time winner. That, that okay. completely changes everything. All right, my bad on the wording. Okay, no, go further the to the point. Not, not just my bad. Going it's further so to the point, um, Vasilevsky. It, it seems like they're just being a little bit overly sentimental and trying to figure out who to give it to. So again, I'm going off the board. If this guy stays healthy, I think he wins it. It's Darcy Kemper. Um, yes, thank you, Chris T. Repeat means back to back. <laughs> All right, I misworded it. Okay. But again, it's just there's 
it seems to me like they're almost trying not to name the same person a winner because Vasilevsky could have multiple ones. No, Henry Joe, not, all, have not all the people Gary in the Price chat understood. All right. But moving on to the Norris. Guys, tell me there's no way the press does not vote for Kale McCarr. And, uh, uh, I, I can't say that they, they just vote for Kale McCarr for the sake of voting for Kale McCarr. Yes, the the vote the voters seem to have back to back steel cage matches. Okay, I'm I'm for that, but um, I uh, you can't just go and say Kale McCarr is just going to win the Norris. You can't. Uh, I know that they tend to lean towards points, but what if Adam Fox has another season like he had this past year? And I'm not saying Adam Fox is going to be a back to back winner because it's tough to win the Norris back to back. The last back to back winner of the Norris Trophy happened to be Nicholas Lidstrom. <laughs> And that's one of the three best defensemen of all time. Probably. So um, I could see Hedman winning it again, especially if he puts up like 60 to 70 points. They're going to look at him and say, hey, Tampa has a reduced team and Hedman is still playing at an elite level. So there goes Victor Hedman. I'm going to have to go with Victor Hedman. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go – I'm going to go with the obvious choice. I'm going to go with Darian Hatcher. <laughs> um, no, uh, um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go Cal McCarr. Um, I mean, Cal McCarr, the guy, it just seems like you could see it coming. I mean, he's, he's really skilled. He's going to play on an avalanche team. Uh, I know we're going to get to the president's trophy prediction, but yes, he's going to are. play on the, he's going to play on an avalanche team. That's going to be in contention to win that. Um, they're a high octane, fast paced, high scoring team. Um, and the guy is for a defenseman, the way he skates and moves laterally and his, his just puck skills, he's he's really, really good. And I think it's he's gonna get his due and he's gonna win it this year. <laughs> Libor Hayek will win the uh the three Norris trophies. Uh and yeah, I, I would I, fall I, over I, dead on my face. Yeah, I uh I, I think it's going to be Kale McCarr pretty much no matter what season ends tomorrow that they, they'll vote for Kale, Kale McCarr. That being said, uh, Adam Fox won a Norris for a team that didn't make the playoffs. He so, was the first one to do it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's possible. It's very possible, but I also think Kale McCarr didn't have enough games because he had an injury during the season that that's why, Fox did that, and even though the Rangers offense went nowhere. Here's a dark horse end. for you, um, Miro Heiskin, and I, I think he's the second best. I think he's the second best skating defenseman behind Kel McCarr, um, and he's 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 very good. If he played on a team, not let's say not in Dallas, if he played for the Montreal Canadiens or the Maple Leafs or the Rangers or you know the Bruins. It, he would be he would be much more highly regarded. I think Miro Heiskin is. He very needs good. to put up the offensive numbers, though. He, does. he hasn't really put up the numbers that would get him close. And there is precedent for for defensemen getting the Norris based on points. Paul Coffey mm-hmm. in '95. Paul Coffey was not the best defenseman yeah. in the league in 1995, yeah. but he won the Norris. Eric Carlson in 2012. Yeah, in his own zone, he was average at best. Yeah. and yeah. Shane Weber had, I think, a 50-point year that year and didn't win the Norris, but Eric Carlson won it. P.K. Subban in 2013 won the Norris because of offensive numbers, and yeah. he's horrible defensively. So uh, I, there is a precedent. I could see it happening, but I, I think if Victor Hedman has another 60, 60 to 70-point season, they're going to look at this and say, hey, you know, Kel McCarr is on a President's Trophy winner. Victor Hedman is on a team that's not a President's Trophy winner, but there's still a good team, Victor Hedman. And Victor Hedman's got name power, mm. which is another thing Norris voters usually do is they go to the guy with the reputation. It's a mob mentality type thing with these voters. And that happens a lot so many times. It's it's like the gold gloves in baseball. They're just like, that guy's a good fielder. Not looking at metrics or anything else or whether or not their skills are diminishing. All right, so – Now, guys, we got to say who the MVP is. Phil, you're going to start this one because I think I know the name you're about to throw out there. 
I wanted to say Connor McDavid because I think Connor McDavid's going to have another ridiculous season, but I, I think that his team is going to excel, and I think it's Nathan McKinnon. I, I think this is the year that Nathan McKinnon finally says, screw this, I'm going full Michael Jordan, like he's basically done already with his words, and he's just going to drag everybody, and he's going to be that guy that basically turns into a Michael Jordan type. No, you need to be better. No, you need to be better. This is how you get better. This is how you get better. And he's, I think he's going to win the Hart Trophy. And lastly, uh, going with that mentality, you, you guys aren't doing it. Screw it. I'll do it. I'll carry us. Anthony. I mean, I, I think it's, I think it's one of three possible players, McKinnon, McDavid, or um, in my opinion, Leon Dreisaitl. Um the guy's amazing, but I'm I'm gonna go McDavid. Uh I mean I just the only way I don't see him winning it, and don't get me wrong, 100 points is is ridiculous. But if he just I can't believe I'm just I'm saying this, but if he just scores a hundred points and you know McKinnon maybe McKinnon maybe reaches a hundred or or even the high nineties and that being the avalanche may win the president's trophy, I could see it going to McKinnon instead. But I, I have a feeling McDavid David's going to go off and score like 120 to 130 points. Um, and because of that point total, he's he's going to win it again. Um, so my pick is McDavid. Off to you, Mark. Uh, I want to say my pick from last year, but I can. It's going to be McDavid. The caveat is I will always put my second pick to be Sebastian Ajo because one of these days I just have a feeling he's going to take off. But um, – no, it's McDavid. It, McDavid is everything to the Edmonton Oilers, and he's probably going to score, I'll, I'll say, 130, 140 points this year. There's there's no way he can't. If he scores it. 140 points, there's no way anyone else is winning the MVP. I'll, I will put money on that. If he scores yeah. 140 points, he would be the first player to, to, to break that mark since Mario Lemieux and Yarmir Yager in 1996. I mean, that's, that's 25 that's, years right there. I know that's unbelievable. And he had a hundred, he had a hundred points in uh, 56 games last year. I mean, that's, that's, that was on pace for over 150. Yeah. And he's playing in a team that has uh, a rebuilding LA team, a rebuilding Anaheim team, an expansion team. I was playing in a division. I mean, uh, so he's got Vegas that's in the Pacific and I mean, what are the tomato cans are there? Vancouver. So he might get 150. And then we're going to have to debate on who's more valuable to the team. And that a never ending debate on the most outstanding player. But fortunately, hockey's got that. To the team stuff, guys, who are your division winners for the 2021 22 season? Anthony, I'm going to start with you. Well, we, we did our Metro one. So, I mean, I don't know if it's, but no, we did uh, the power rankings. No, we picked division winners. No, we picked the division winner for the Metro. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's, yeah, so, well, yeah. yeah. Um, so ex excluding the Metro, um, I think the Panthers are going to win the Atlantic. Um, the Pacific, I think Vegas is going to win. Um, and the Central, I mean, I, I, Colorado. you, you got to, yeah, you, you got to go with Colorado. Yeah. Uh, we're almost unanimous on this because, by the way, if you missed it last week, Anthony and Phil both said the Islanders are going to win the division. And I said the only team that isn't going to win the division – or, sorry, that uh, the only team that can beat them for the division is the Carolina Hurricanes. That's it. I, that's what I got. I don't, and, I don't even think that's the case. I, I, I just – I don't see – I'm not involved with their goaltending. I, 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 like, I just – yeah. I, I, I like their forward group better than the Islanders just because I think they have more top end talent, but I, I think the Islanders might have a, a slightly deeper forward group. Islanders are winning the, the Metro. I, I, I don't have a doubt about that. And the, I'm with Anthony on this. Florida, I think is winning that division. I think Florida I'm with is you on that. Too. And I also think Florida, if Matias Ekholm wouldn't have been uh, signed and extended by the, uh, the predators uh, yesterday, I, I think we would be looking at Florida and the Islanders in a in a in a arms race 
for his services at the deadline. I still think Florida is going to make a, a trade for a top four defenseman at the deadline. And I, I think they're going to get their guy. That's going to put them over Tampa uh, to win that division. I, I think that Colorado is absolutely winning the central and in the Pacific it's, it, it's Vegas. What competition does Vegas have to win that division outside of maybe Edmonton? So, Nope. They got nothing. And, uh, we're all in agreement about the Florida Panthers as well. They're, they're going to be a hell of a team this year. So uh, they're, they're poised for a monster year. The only question is who their goalie is going to be. Is Bobrovsky going to find it again, or is it going to be um, uh, Sub- uh, Spencer Knight taking the reins in only his second season? And even at that second season, it's kind of a light. He's a rookie. He I mean, can be rookie of the year too. Yeah, yeah, you're you're right about that. I I would say that Bobrovsky has to be a major bounce back candidate, bounce back player of the year candidate. Yeah, and then not only that, but you have you have Spencer Knight who looked amazing in the playoffs last yeah. year for them in waiting in the wings. So they had they have one of the better goaltending tandems in the entire league as well. By the way, that could be a dark horse MVP candidate in Alexander Barkov, considering that he gets nominated for the Selkie and also. Uh, he he could put the puck in the net. So could you imagine if he becomes the sixth player in NHL history to score ninety or more points and win a Selkie in the same season? That's gotta put him top three in MVP consideration. It would. It would in my mind. All right, boys, your President's Trophy winner. I think we all might have the same one. So Phil, go ahead. Colorado, Anthony. Colorado. Colorado it is. Clean sweep. So, lastly, who will win the East and who will win the West and who will hoist the Stanley Cup? I'm going to go with mine first so that way Anthony can smile when he says his. Yeah, we kind of talked about this too, but yeah, go we ahead. We talked about this last week, but we're doing it for the league-wide preview. I have the Colorado Avalanche over the New York Islanders. In seven games, Filk. I have Tampa Bay over Colorado in six games. I think Tampa Bay is going to make two moves at the deadline. I think they're going to possibly bring in a defenseman, and if they don't bring in a defenseman, they're going to go get two forwards. And I would not be shocked if one of those forwards is Phil Kessel and what a fit he would be. That The salary – you imagine Arizona retaining on him, bringing him in to help fortify your offense, and then maybe another another checking type player on top of that. Tampa would be right back where they were, and I, I think they would take the East at that point. And I think Colorado, this is finally the year. I think Colorado might go out and get themselves a defenseman by the deadline too, if they're not, especially if they're not happy with Bowen Byram's progress. If Kemper's healthy, that's the difference. I was not a believer on Grubauer, and I was I wasn't a believer on whoever the other guy was. I forgot. Yeah, I, 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 I need that for Pavel Francois. Yeah, Pablo Francois. So, uh, no, no, absolutely not. Anthony, go ahead. Well, your lips to God's ears, uh, NYR Mike, but um, because I'm but because I'm a glutton for punishment and the reverse jinx, um, I'm gonna say that the Vegas Golden Knights defeat the Islanders in the Stanley Cup Finals, and I'm, I'm, I'm crushed uh, for the third year in a row. But um, the reason why I say Vegas is because they're a great team as is and, and probably in you know, the top four cup contenders, but I think they're going to finally upgrade Chandler Stevenson, um, centering Pacioretty and Stone. I think they're going to get a legitimate center, whether they, they trade for Tomas Hurdle um, or, you know, uh, you know, woo woo Claude Giroux is not talking contract extension with the Flyers until the, until the summer. Maybe, maybe if the Flyers are out of it, they make the decision to move him. Um, but Ooh. I, I, uh, I, I just think they're going to do something to get deeper at center. Cause let's face it, boys, you can't, you can't win with Colin Stevenson as your number two or number one center, whichever, you want to avoid, whichever line you want. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Whichever line you want to, think is number one whether it's a Carlson line or that line but um, he needs to be upgraded he's more of a bottom six center but if they do that they have the rest of the tools to to win the cup and um, I think they're uh, ultimately going to do it. 
short side note before we move on, but Colin Stevenson would actually be a good guest to get for us from Newsday for yes. Rangers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That would be all right. That would... So that's our Stanley Cup predictions, guys. Uh, what do you think? Do you, do you just, so a lot of people have been agreeing with us. There's going to be things that are going to happen during this season. We're going to have some craziness. Can't wait to find out what it is. So, whatever you think, are we off or is somebody going to win the cup? Put it all down in the comments below. All right. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So, check out. Any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.